JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for February the 16th. I am Haral Amos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be consider considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all but uh, two of the other uh, major currencies on Tuesday during the Asian session Wednesday. It gained only versus JPY and CHF, while it lost the most ground versus AUD and NZD. The weakening of the US dollar and the other safe havens, uh, yen and franc, combined with the strengthening of the risk linked Aussie and Kiwi, suggests that market sentiment market sentiment took a 118 degree spin at some point yesterday. Indeed, major European and US indices were a sea of green, averaging gains of 1.77%, with the positive appetite rolling into the Asian session today. Now, once again, the driver were, uh, was um, the driver was development surrounding uh, the geopolitical tensions in Ukraine. Remember that on Friday and Monday, investors were spooked uh, by headlines that Russia could attack Ukraine any day, with the most possible one being today. However, yesterday reports said that some Russian troops were returning to their bases after exercises near Ukraine, which eased fears of further escalation for now. However, NATO said that it had yet to see any evidence of uh, any escalation, with uh, a while US President Joe Biden uh, warned that uh, more than 150,000 Russia, Russian troops uh, remained uh, near the, Ukraini the Ukrainian border. Therefore, we are reluctant to say that uh, the matter is resolved and uh, behind us. So. Uh, we would not call for a long-lasting recovery in risky assets uh, uh, for now, especially with um, monetary policy staying on investors' uh, agenda. Uh, today we have uh, the minutes from uh, from the latest FOMC gathering, from from which we got the the message that uh, a hike a hike in March. Uh, uh, is uh, is coming and that there is a decent likelihood for more liftoffs uh, this year than the December dot plot suggested. Now, following a strong employment report, accelerating inflation and Bullard's uh, recent hoggish remarks, uh, market participants are fully pricing in around six quarter point hikes by the end of the year. So, we will scan the minutes for clues as to, as to whether this number is logical or not. Anything confirming that the Fed is willing to proceed as aggressive as the current market pricing suggests could support the US dollar and perhaps result in a new retreat in equities. The opposite could be true if, uh, if the minutes reveal a more cautious picture than Fed Chair Powell presented at the press conference following uh, the decision. Now ahead of the minutes we get inflation data for January from Canada. The headline CPI is expected to stay at 4.8% year over year, while the core one to have slid to 3.5 from 4%. At its latest gathering, the Bank of Canada decided to keep interest rates uh, untouched at 0.25% at a time when the financial community was expecting a hike. Now, in the statement accompanying the decision, it was noted that the Council expects rates to increase and that the overall economic slug is now absorbed, which means that they are more likely to hit the hike button in March. However, they once again noted that the Omicron coronavirus variant is weighing on activity, with Governor Macklem adding that hikes will not be automatic. 
they will take decisions at each uh, meeting he added. So with all that in mind, we don't expect slowing core inflation to stop Bank of Canada officials from pushing the hike button in March, but it could prompt market participants to scale back their bets with regards to upcoming liftoffs. Something like that could weigh somewhat on the Canadian dollar. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, during the early European morning, we already got uh, the UK CPIs for January with both the headline and core rates rising slightly more than expected. The pound strengthened slightly as uh, this keeps the door open for a double hike at the Bank of England's upcoming gathering. Remember that at the last one, officials voted five to four uh, for a hike uh, by 25 basis points, with the four descenders calling for a 50 basis points increase. Thus, only one member needs to be convinced uh, for, uh, for that to happen in March. Now, from the US, apart from the FOMC minutes, we also have the retail sales for January, with both the headline and core rates expected to have rebounded, as well as the industrial production for the same month, which is also expected to have rebounded somewhat. As for tonight, during the Asian session Thursday, Australia releases its, its employment data for January. The unemployment rate is expected to have held steady at 4.2%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has lost 15,000 jobs after adding 64.8 thousand in December. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. At this point, I must let you know that there will be no daily market review video for the rest of the week and next uh, Tuesday, neither a Weekly Market Outlook webinar or Monday. So, goodbye. Have a great day, a great rest of the week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Wednesday. JFT, just fair and direct.